years ago, I built this cabinet to go underneath my drill press to store all my drill bits and other drilling supplies. And it's been great. Unfortunately, I've outgrown it. I've got so many drill bits, particularly large Forstner bits, and they just don't fit in the drawers that well. So I'm going to see if we can make a little hanging rack to go next to my drill press to store all these bits in. Let's take a look. Well, I've sort of been on a mission to use up some of my scrap, and I went through a hundred or so pieces of 2x4, finally found one that was uh, pretty straight. So I'm going to run this through the jointer, I'm going to run it through the planer, and I'm going to wind up with a square piece of wood. We'll get that taken care of first. <laughs> Okay, now with a reasonably square piece of wood, what I want to do is I want to rip it at a 35 degree angle, and I'd like for my rip to be pretty much exactly in the middle of this piece of wood so that I can get two pieces out of it. The way to do that is to draw a line from corner to corner on the board, which will give you the center point. And then with your bevel angle set at 30 deg 35 degrees, move it until it intersects that crossed point in the middle. And this will be the cut line. Okay, so the next step, the thing I want to do is I want to rip a piece of plywood Mine's going to be 6 and 1 16th inch wide because of a special place that I'm going to put this. Yours can be any width you want. Okay, the next step is just to set up a, a stop block and cut this uh, angled piece of 2x4 to length. And you're going to need about 10 of them. Um, I cut 11, just to be on the safe side. And uh, I cut them 6 and 1 16th, which is the same width as the piece of plywood backing I'm going to use. Whatever width backing you use, cut it to that length. Okay, all of my Forstner bits have either 3 8 inch shanks or half inch shanks. So I'm going to drill 3 8 and half inch holes. And what I did was I took one piece of this angled piece of wood and I marked the center this direction and I marked in an inch and a half. Same down here, inch and a half from the end and the center here. All right, we're getting set up here now to drill. What I've done is I've taken this uh, leftover piece of beveled two by four and I've put it against the fence I've taken a scrap piece of plywood and butted that up to it. And what I've done basically is made a rest for each one of these pieces so that it'll sit level. Then I moved the fence back and forth until I got the whole location lined up middle, front to back on my middle mark. Then with this hole lined up, I made a mark here Rather than use a stop block, which is going to get in my way, I'll just move the end of each board to that mark, and then I'll move it down to this mark and drill this hole. That'll save me having to mark each and every one of these boards. Now, when I was marking this out, I also marked a one inch mark down from the drilling location, and that's going to be my depth of cut. So I have set this so that it bottoms out right there at the one inch mark and I think we're all set to start drilling.
And there we go. All right, with all the holes drilled, it's just a matter of gluing these to the backer board. Now, you don't see me do this too often, but I'm gonna use some fasteners. I'm gonna use some 23 gauge pins, simply because clamping this would be too difficult and would take up way too much time. Now, I've put some tick marks here at three quarters of an inch. That's a little bit arbitrary. But I wanted to have some space here at the bottom to put some mounting screws in to screw this to the wall. So I'm going to line this first one up. I'm going to take a scrap one and put it here as a spacer. And I'm going to line it up with both edges. And just pop a couple of uh, nails into it. Now using this spacer, I can glue this next one in. Get that lined up. Pull my spacer out. Pop a couple nails. Alright, putting in the last one now. And we'll let this dry for a little while. And then mount it up to the wall and load it up with drill bits. Alright, now I've marked off my locations for mounting holes. And I'm going to just drill clearance holes for wood screws. You could drill holes and mount these on a pegboard hook or you could use other types of anchoring systems. You could even put a French cleat on the back of this and uh, mount it on a French cleat system if you use that in your shop. Alright, I'm going to grab a countersink bit and uh, chamfer these holes so the screws will sit flush and we'll be all set. Okay, just finished up mounting up this uh, little drill bit rack. Let's see how this is going to look. I'll put the uh, Forstner bits with the half inch shank in there and one with a 3 8 inch shank there. Oh yeah. That's going to be just fine. Nice and easy to get to, out of the way. And I'm going to free up some drawer space in my little cabinet underneath my drill press. So that's a quick couple hour project for you that will save some space in your shop. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.